Okay, uh, today we're going to do a lesson on alarm system installation. We're going to talk about um, a couple different things, how to wire the panel, and Chelsea Slipe has done a nice job of um, developing a DSC um, panel circuit board. Obviously, it's not the real thing, but we put it on a poster board so that the students would be get a better idea of how to apply each power su supply and sensor and communication device to the actual screws on the circuit board so we can get this alarm system to actually work. Whenever we're working with a circuit board, we always want to look at it from left to right. Um, if we start in the first two screws of the DSC panel, we're going to apply a 16.5 volt transformer, little white transformer um, that comes with your uh, kit. That will basically have a red and black wire where you can use 18, uh, two, which is um, two wires and 18 gauge wire that will go right into the screws for AC power and we're ready to go with primary power. The next two, we'll see AUX on the next two uh, screw holes that would be number three and four. What this is, AUX means auxiliary or short for auxiliary, and it really means backup power for the whole system. Um, some sensors require backup power just in case you lose electricity in your house. This backup battery is going to actually give you an extra four to six hours of time for your alarm system to work. The next uh, screws, which would be um, five and six, you'll see something that says bell. Now in the old days of alarm systems, all they really had as uh, enunciating devices were bells. Um, today we have a variation of bells. We have sirens, horns, and strobes that either make, uh, that either light up or make loud sounds to let the person know that their house is being broken into, or their business for that matter. Um, the next set of screws are going to be labeled yellow and green. And Chels did a nice job of running our yellow and green up to our keypad. It's our communication device uh, between yourself, the, the user, and the panel itself. We see yellow and green going to the back of the keypad. In fact, the back of the keypad actually has letters in the screw holes that say yellow, Y, G, green, uh, R, red, and B, black. So you know where to wire the back of the keypad based on those letters, and you'll see them above the screw holes. So we have red and black going to auxiliary, which gives our keypad about four to six hours of backup power should the electricity fail. And then we have our communication wires, which are yellow and green. Normally in security, yellow and green wires normally dictate uh, communication. Red and black are often designated as power wires. Going further across, we have a PGM, one and two. And all that is in the DSC system is it's another programmable output, or it's really a almost like having an, um, an electrical outlet on your panel. You could put another siren or strobe in this um, and connect it um, and be able to power that um, because at, at some point on the bell output, you're just going to run out of milliamps to actually run the siren, strobe, or horn, whatever it is you happen to be running. Um, it'll tell you in the schematic, if you're not going to use these, how to wire these. This is pretty important. Just take a resistor and run it from PGM1 to auxiliary plus, and take PGM2 and run it to auxiliary negative. And then once you power your system up, it'll stay out of trouble, because if this isn't being used, you at least have to put a resistor on the circuit. And we'll get into resistors down the road a little bit in terms of how they work. Next thing up we have is all across this board, all the way down, we're going to see Z's and comms, okay? Um, Z standing for zone, and comm standing for um, just the negative, on the positive and negative, negative setup for each circuit. The Z uh, is going to be the positive, the comm is going to be the negative. But note something. We see the first thing that we hook up to our zone is going to be our smoke detector. Normally in alarm systems, we designate zone one for anything related to fire. Fire is a life safety situation, so we want to make that our primary um, concern, so we're going to use the first zone for that. We can see on um, the CHELS wired up the motion sensor to the second zone. And another interesting little feature here. Notice that she's using Z2 and COM, but she's using the same COM or negative as she used for zone one, which means how, why does DSC do that? Well, really, they just save space. So they can make a smaller circuit board. 
So we're sharing a negative. We have a positive and negative. We have a positive and negative. We have one zone for the motion. We have another zone for the smoke detector. Now, Charles only hooked up two sensors. We left the rest of them open so that we could show you how these 2.2K resistors work. All a resistor is, is we're going to put the resistors in the zones that aren't being used. Z3 and COM, we put a resistor in. Z4 and COM, resistor. Z5 and COM, resistor. C6 and, or Z6 and COM, resistor. Okay, so our resistors, again, basically are to, to kind of return to that because it's important. They're just fooling the panel into thinking that something like a motion sensor or a smoke detector is actually on the panel. Um, the panel's looking for that 2.2K resistance, and in fact, each one of these resistors has 2.2K of resistance. So what we're doing is, when we get these things, the way she has this wire, Chelsea has this wire, from left to right, after we resistor the PGMs, and we power up with our, we plug our primary transformer in, what's going to happen is we can stay out of trouble. When the keypad lights up and says, hey, everything looks good, um, and, and is ready to arm, these resistors will keep us out of that trouble mode that will light up and tell you, hey, one of your circuits isn't wired right or one of your circuits is open. Okay, so resistors, again, um, kind of fool the panel. They close the circuit or close that zone and, and basically get that thing to, to get the keypad and the panel to function properly. Going all the way over, we see a couple things. We have ring tip, ring tip, and a ground. These four wires basically connect to a phone jack that's going to go into um, a wall phone jack what that does is um, somebody breaks into your house at 3 o'clock in the morning. Um, Chelsea's motion sensor goes off. Okay, Might set the siren off um, to maybe um, alert yourself and the burglar that we know what's going on. There's somebody that you bro you've broken into their house. But also, it's going to send out a signal over the phone line to the central station that you pay a monthly service fee for. And that's going to let them know that, hey, we need to notify the police because um, Chelsea's house or my house is being broken into. Let's get the police out there ASAP. So the purpose of the ring tip in this area is really, again, just an RJ45 jack that plugs into your phone line and boom, you're ready to go. Um, other variations because everyone always says, hey, Mr. Shark, what if somebody cuts your phone line? Well, today um, I've done some work down in Philadelphia where phone lines do get cut from time to time in terms of burglaries that occur. So what they actually do now is they'll actually put cell links in the actual alarm panel. So it's a cellular device that's wireless that will actually, if, if one of these circuits is broken, will let the central station know um, via um, a cell link rather than just the phone line. So while the phone line is fine as a primary um, communication, it's not what you want solely because, again, if somebody cuts your phone lines, you're going to have all kinds of problems. But that wraps up just a basic introduction to um, simple wiring, where our wiring is going to go. Um, we'll get into uh, more specifics in terms of the panel later on as we get into more detail.